Hello everyone. This is my Alexander Master Toolmaker milling machine. Now over the last few years I've been rebuilding it and mechanically it's now finished off. It still needs painting but we'll be doing that uh, a little later once I've got it all uh, plumbed in and working. Now one of the things which I need to do to this machine is get it flat and level. It needs to be level in two planes so back and forth and also sideways. Now you normally adjust these machines with feet which are in each corner and then you can crank them up and down to get the, uh, the level correct. Now this machine hasn't got any feet so I need to fit some. Now I've been looking online and you can buy feet. The machine weighs around about a thousand pounds which is about 500 kilos. Uh, so the feet are going to have to be strong and the feet that I've found are quite expensive. So I thought to myself well can you make your own feet? for such a heavy piece of equipment. Of course you can. I found these parts in the workshop. We've got a piece of studding here or all thread M16. That's uh, the thread is two millimeters pitch. So that's the standard M16 piece of studding. And I've got a chunk of steel bar here. That's 30 millimeters wide, 10 millimeters thick and a meter long. And I've also found a load of 16 or M16 nuts which we can use on the all thread and the last thing from the oh, from the pile of wood outside is this it's a lump of joist material left over from when I made the extension roof and that's what that is it's 200 by 50 or 8 by 2 and it's a meter long so I'm hoping out of those bits I can make the adjustable feet for the milling machine. The feet are going to be 100 millimeters square and 50 millimeters thick. That's around four inches square and two inches thick. I work on the saw and I start to cut the blanks from the wooden planks. Each of the feet need to have a slot cut in their top surface. This slot is to hold a short length of the 30 by 10 millimeter steel bar, but more on this a little later. I mark out each of the feet and then I go back onto the saw. This is a depth limiter lever. Once pushed down like this it will stop the saw blade going all the way down through the wood. You can control how far it goes down by twisting the knob on the top of the lever. I've drawn a line on the end of the wood that shows the depth I want the saw to cut down to. So I pull the saw blade down then by twisting the knob I can adjust the depth the blade will cut down to. The blade is adjusted till it comes level with the line I've drawn on the end of our job. All I have to do now is just cut away the wood between the lines down to the level I've set the saw to. I end up with these four blanks. Now what's next? I'll tell you what's next is adding some more strength to these four feet. Now we've got a slot down the centre of each of them which handily takes our piece of steel that we found in the scrap bin. Now what I'm going to do is cut off four pieces of this, one for each of the feet, so it sits in the top like this. In the centre of this piece of steel I'm going to drill and tap that M16 and that's going to take the all thread and the weight of the machine. So this bar will spread the weight over the whole width of the the foot. Also the foot, the wooden foot, the grain runs in this direction. Now that's important because if it ran in this direction there's chance that it could crack along the grain and snap off. So the grain has got to be across uh, our load bearing member here. So we're going to drill and tap that M16. I'll put in two countersunk uh, holes one each side of that and they will hold two countersunk screws which hold this in place on top of the wood. Later on we may cut the corners off as well just to make it look a little bit nicer. Anyway let's get on and start cutting this piece of steel. With the job in the vise I get the axle and cut off four pieces all 100 millimeters long. That's about four inches. I file the ends to clean them up and make sure that they're nice and square. And there we have them, all four metal supports for the four wooden feet. Right, I've marked out and centre dotted where the holes need to go. I drill through with a 2.5mm pilot drill first. The tapping drill size for an M16 thread is 14mm. That's quite a large drill, so the drill speed will need to be low. 
If you reduce the speed of a drill using V-belts or the gearbox, this means the torque of the drill will be increased. If the drill does snag in the job, it'll spin the vise and drag you in to meet a sticky end. To stop this happening, I bolt the vise to the bed of the drill. As I'm drilling the job, I use cutting oil. This will help lubricate the drill and take heat away as well. I hold the steel bar nice and level in the vise. The M16 taper tap is in the tap wrench. I run cutting oil on the tap's teeth and also in the hole in the job. I tap the thread, making sure the tap stays nice and vertical all the time. Back to the wooden foot now. You see in the drill press a 20mm diameter forced a bit. This type of wood drill produces a nice round hole. I've used a bradle to produce a centre for the drill to follow. And you can see that the drill cuts nicely and produces a good round hole. Our wooden foot is coming along nicely. We now have that 20mm hole drilled down through the centre, care of the forced a bit. And when I put the load spreading piece of steel in the top, I can see that that is bang in the centre of the hole that we've just drilled. Now I've drilled out the two holes uh, either side. Uh, they are now 4.5mm in diameter, countersunk on top, and they will take the number 3 by 35 millimeter wood screws which will hold the steel in place on top of our foot. Before we fit the steel bars I want to cut the corners off the wooden feet. I've set up a stop on the saw and using that I can cut off the same amount of corner from each corner. Now to my eyes that's a far better looking foot. The weight of the milling machine will be transferred to the four feet through four legs. I'm going to make the legs out of M16 steel studding. This is also called all thread. I get busy with the axle and cut off four lengths, all 150 millimetres or six inches long. Now, let's get to work on the lathe. The first job is to square the end of the studding. Next, we drill a centre hole in this end of the bar. I release a collet in the headstock. This enables me to pull out our job. I need to machine the bar down to a diameter of 13mm for a length of 70mm from the end with the centre hole. To support this long length I fit a rotating centre in the tail stock and bring that into the centre hole in this end of the job. I can now turn the bar down to 13mm in diameter. The next job is to drill a hole 4.2mm in diameter and 15mm deep. Well, 4.2mm diameter is the tapping drill size for an M5 thread. And tapping an M5 thread is what I do next. Almost finished now, I turn the job round in the collet and face off its other end. And now this part is finished. I remove it from the collet and make three more just like it. It's time to assemble the feet. Three nuts need to be screwed onto each of the M16 legs. With the legs ready to go, I screw one of them into a low spreader bar and then see that I've forgotten the washer. I assemble the other three legs the same as the first one, but this time I don't forget to fit the washer. And there we have it, four finished adjustable feet waiting to go under the milling machine. In fact, there is one last thing I must do before they go under the mill. On the leg there are three nuts here, and the spreader bar at the bottom, that's also tapped M16. The top two nuts need to be locked together, because that's the way that we're going to be adjusting them. So I have two spanners here, now they are M16, we need a 24mm, or two 24mm spanners, I've got a ring on top and a spanner underneath, I'm going to put them together and lock them like that. Now I've locked them in a position where there's a little bit of the thread just protruding out the top of the top nut and that means that I can put a washer on there like that. So when the miller machine comes down it'll be sitting on top of that washer. Now the reason that these two nuts are locked together is that's the way we're going to be adjusting the feet once they're underneath the milling machine. The lower nut that's a lock nut. So once it's up to the right height, I can then bring this nut down like this, lock that against the foot, and now the whole lot is locked together. 
Now you may remember that I drilled and tapped an M5 thread just here. Now the reason that I did that I'll be showing you once the feet are assembled to the milling machine. So here I am at the base of the milling machine. Now you've noticed that I've lifted it up. Now the way that I was going to do that was with, with a crowbar, put it underneath, lift it up just a little, put in a piece of wood, go around to another corner, lift it, and then keep doing that at the, at the four corners until I got it up to the height that I wanted. But there really isn't a lot of space around this miller machine and I was having difficulty doing that. And for some time I've been wanting to get a jack which would do this particular job and that's what I did. And I'll be showing you that jack uh, in a moment. So we have the base of the miller machine right up in the air now. You can see there's a big gap underneath and I can get the feet underneath the base of the mill and in line with the, the hole here. Now you remember that I drilled the a hole in the top here and then tap that M5. This is what that is for. This goes underneath, it comes up through the hole here. I've machined a washer with a hole in which goes into the top of the, the base and then I have a piece of M5 studding with an acorn nut on top and a washer. That goes through the washer, through the large washer that I've made. I can now screw that up like that and tighten it with a little span. Now that's the foot fitted. Now once I've, once I've got all four fitted I can then lower this to the ground again and adjust the feet to get the whole machine nice and level. And I'll be going through that, that sequence of events in just a moment. All four feet are now fitted to the milling machine and it's time to bring that milling machine down so the feet are actually on the floor. So this is the point where I introduce you to my new jack and here it is! Ta-da! Well to be truthful when the jack arrived it's around about twice as large as I thought it was going to be and uh, it lifts the milling machine with no trouble at all, funnily enough, uh, but I could have done with one about half the size of this. It will be very ironic if I hurt my back moving the thing that I bought to try and stop me hurting my back. <laughs> this type of jack is called a tow jack. It's hydraulic, there's a hydraulic tank here, there's a pump in the centre of that tank and the pump pumps the oil into the hydraulic cylinder which is here. At the base of the hydraulic cylinder there's the toe. Now as I pump the pump, this, the oil will be pumped into the cylinder, the cylinder will rise, so the whole, the whole body and the tank will rise up, with it the toe, and this is how it gets its name, that's the toe. So anything that the toe will fit under when it's down it will then lift. This particular jack can lift three tonnes. Once you get it up and you want to get it down, you undo this valve here, that lets the oil out and then the cylinder will go down to the bottom again. There's one other thing it can do and it can act as a normal jack but that high so this will also be able to lift uh, three tonne as well. So if you've got something that's high this is also good. So that's for low and this is for high. To get the machine down to its feet is quite easy. Place a jack under one side of the base and lift. The machine will start to lean away from the jack. Keep your wits about you, look at the machine and make sure that it's not going to topple. As soon as one of the packing pieces of wood becomes loose, pull it out and replace it with a thinner piece of packing about half the thickness of the original. Now lower the jack and the machine till the weight is taken by the newer, lower pile of wood. Move the jack to the other side of the machine, lift and remove a piece of packing and bring down the machine again. Go to the front of the machine and remove packing there. Take it easy, bring the machine down in small steps till the feet meet the floor. Right, now we need to get the machine level. So it's now time to set the level 
of this machine. Now the table here of the mill is set perfectly to the machine itself. So as we go across in, in X, I know that this table doesn't vary in height. And also if we go in Y, which is to and from the machine, this doesn't vary. Now we're going to be checking the level using a engineering spirit level. It's just the same as a normal spirit level, only it's a little bit more accurate. So I can set this up for looking at the level of the machine in this direction, turn it round and now looks at it in that direction. We are looking directly at one of the forward feet here. The M16 studding is running from the, the foot up into the machine and then at the top here there's that M5 acorn nut with a shaft that comes down that holds everything in place. Now I've loosened the M5 nut at the top and the piece of studding that goes down here. There are three nuts on the M16 shaft. The lower one you can see is loose and that is a lock nut which we will lock once we get the foot to the correct height. The two nuts at the top are the two nuts that we're going to be using to adjust the height. Now those two nuts are locked together and they're locked directly onto the shaft. So if I want to move the base up what I need to do is turn these anti-clockwise looking from the top. They will turn the M16 piece of studding which is threaded into the load bar on the top of the foot. So as that unscrews, it unscrews from that load bar and will lift the machine. So if I want to go up, I turn this anti-clockwise like this. And now the machine will increase in height from this corner. Once it's all correct and the height is nicely adjusted, then I bring this nut down tighten that up to the base like that and now that's locked against the base these two are locked together and turn the M5 nut at the top which will lock that down and then everything is solid and correct. Now you need to end up with the machine level and its weight spread evenly between the four adjustable feet. I find this machine's weight is on two diagonally opposite feet the machine will rock on those two feet. The other two feet on the other diagonal are too high and off the ground. As I rock the machine I turn the legs of the two loose feet anti-clockwise until they're both touching the floor. I then carry on turning the legs one more flat of the nut. Now all four feet are on the floor you can check the level of the machine from its table using machine level. Find the lower corner or side of the machine, now turn the leg or legs on that lower corner or side anti-clockwise looking from the top. How far do you turn the legs? I normally count the flats of the nuts. Two flats, then look at the level again. Two more flats, look at the level again. You keep going until the table is level from front to back and also side to side. Now go around each leg and using the same spanner rotate it just a fraction. Remember how hard it is to turn. All you're aiming for is it to take the same amount of effort to move any one of the four legs. If you find an easy to turn leg, turn it one or two flats of the nut and check the machine's level. Keep going with this until it takes the same amount of effort to move any one of the four legs. Once they are the same or similar, the weight should be spread evenly between the four feet. Check the machine's level. If it's OK, tighten the lock nuts on all four feet and check the level one more time. This procedure may take a little practice. So, can you make your own adjustable feet for a piece of heavy machinery? Of course you can. And with that, this video is at an end. Take care everybody. I'll see you next time.